So, hi, everybody. So, my name is Paul, and we are a little bit late, so I'm going to uh, avoid the bio stuff. Uh, I will make this uh, presentation with a colleague of me. He should be here today, but in fact, he has a, a calendar uh, conflict, so he's in Dubai, and it's not easy to be in two places in the same day. So, today, uh, I'm going to speak about a new uh, kind of issue we have during uh, investigation. Uh, it's in fact a, a, a new trend for uh, APT actors to add some feature inside of the infection vector in order to never deliver the exploit or the final remote administration tool if they are not sure at 100% that the targeted people is a good one. I will show you with five case studies exactly how the guys uh, modified the infection vector in order to, to limit the spread of uh, the exploit of the, or, or, or the remote administration tool. After, I will uh, mention that it's maybe the beginning of a, a real uh, massive trend and I will explain you some other tricks that attackers could do to detect if it's really the good target and not an analyst or a sandbox or whatever. I will speak a little bit about mitigation. I, it, it will be something really common. I, it's not a rocket ship, it's simply a best practice. It, it's going to be short. After I will uh, have a conclusion, and I decided last week to add a post-conclusion chapter about uh, technical stuff and uh, about PowerShell, just as before, and WinDBG. So I will show you how to debug PowerShell with WinDBG and, uh, and specifically uh, how to massively uh, make automate uh, analysis with this uh, tool. So. What's new? So, in my case, generally, the common model is the attacker send a document, an office document, Excel document, whatever, with macro or a zero day or vulnerability, and they finally execute something on the machine. And this something is usually a remote administration tool that gives access to the bad guys to, to the machine. So. But the thing is, zero day are expensive first. And if you develop your own uh, remote administration tool with complex fixture, etc., it's uh, expensive too. So we, we are seeing a new trend where attackers try to never deliver zero day exploit or rat on infected machine if they are not sure at 100% is a good target, is a good person in, uh, on the system. The first uh, case study uh, I had to work on concerned NATO. And uh, you've got the ash if you want to, to look at it for yourself, by yourself. It's a doc, a, a Word document. And inside of this Word document, you have a flash object. You can embed it flash object in Word document. It's supported without any problem. And this flash document, uh, did something not really common. In fact, he used a Flash API uh, named Capability Server Strings to generate uh, uh, a kind of uh, HTTP request with information on the system. So, for example, uh, you have the Flash uh, if in ActiveX object. It means that if you extract the flash object from the document and you execute it in standalone. Typically, when you are an analysis, you take sub-object and you work individually on each sub-object. Uh, if you use the flash object alone, this value won't be ActiveX, like on the screenshot, but uh, standalone or something like that. So this query is sent to the CC. And the attacker is able to check the value and be sure that the flash object is executed inside of a word and not directly like a flash uh, document. Other thing, the attackers get the flash version. So he's able to provide an exploit that matches perfectly the flash version of the target. And last thing, he uh, gets 
the Windows version. So he can have an exploit that match exactly the Windows version. So this flash object, is the first step of this flash object is simply to send data uh, on, on the infected machine. If uh, the data is uh, correct for the bad guys, at this time you will receive a second flash object and this one will be loaded in memory and it's, uh, this one contains the exploit used to drop the final malware on the machine and execute it. So if you don't have a good data, you won't have the final pylon. And in this case, the attackers was fine with us because his name is variable with shell code, with exploit, etc. So it was easy to guess the purpose. Yeah, it's on the fly flash uh, loading. Something interesting is uh, the attackers sent the first uh, email with uh, the malicious attachment in, uh, at the end of December, just before uh, the new year. And here is uh, our open DNS extract of uh, connection to the CC. And you've got some peak at the beginning. And on the right, the huge mountain, is when security researcher finally found the uh, document and work on it. So it generates a lot of requests to the CC. And obviously, more or less, everybody was in holiday during this period. Another case study that uh, match the same uh, way of, uh, of work is from a different actor. So it's not a specific actor that try to avoid uh, giving uh, zero debt to security company. They use uh, document to uh, where the title contains the name of the uh, ambassador secretary of, I don't know, remember which country, uh, Lebanon. So I don't know if uh, the profile is a real one on LinkedIn. He, she, she doesn't have a lot of friend extra, so I think it's maybe a fake profile to justify the title of the document, I, I don't know. So in this case, it's an office document with VBA inside. And the purpose of the macro is to, uh, the first step was to decode in bus 64 uh, a, uh, a string. And this uh, string was stored on a JavaScript uh, file on your machine. And at the end, it executes the JavaScript file with a key, a ERC4 key. So if you find, for example, the JavaScript on virus total, or if you find the JavaScript on a machine, if you don't have the key put in argument when uh, this uh, JavaScript is executed, you cannot read the content. It will be encrypted. So you need the uh, initial uh, office document to be able to analyze the JavaScript. And the purpose was really simple. Take this key and decrypt uh, a second JavaScript uh, script. And the purpose of this uh, final script was to get a lot of information on the machine. So you get the system info output, so install patch and your configuration, basically. He upload uh, the network configuration, the share configuration, the users, etc., etc. So all these data are sent to the attackers. And at this moment, only if it matches what the attackers want, you will receive the final payload on the machine. If it doesn't match uh, what the attackers want, he, the final payload is never downloaded, and you cannot continue your investigation. It's finished for you. Another case study with the same uh, approach is an Excel document with VBA. In this case, the uh, document creates a PowerShell script and executes the script with, uh, inside of a scheduled task. So it's not directly a create process, but it creates a scheduled task. And same thing. This, uh, dropped file, power, uh, PowerShell script, uh, connect to a CC and send specific information on the, on the machine. If it doesn't match what 
uh, the attacker is expected, no final payload. And your investigation is finished. I work a lot of uh, South Korean threat and one specific actor in South Korea started to do exactly the same thing a few weeks, months ago. In South Korea, they basically don't use Office. They use Angul, which is a local Office-like application that supports Korean characters, in fact. So the extension of this uh, kind of document is that HWP for Angul word processor, something like that. So I started to analyze a lot of HWP document, and I find this one, it's pretty interesting. And if you look at the logo at the bottom of, uh, of the first page, it's the logo of the Ministry of Unification. So it's a ministry where the purpose is to unify North Korea and South Korea. So it's something really official, something fun. I don't speak Korean. And I sent uh, the document to someone in South Korea to have a translation of the document. And the guy was so afraid, he said to me, I think it's a classified document, I cannot read it, I will have some problem, blah, 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 blah. blah. So visibly, it's, it, it looks really legit for, for people. So how works the HWP format? In fact, it's a little bit like a office document. It contains OLE object, and the difference is each object are Z uh, compressed with Zlib. So you can simply extract object, unzip, and Zlib uh, the, the object, and you have the final uh, document. In this case, something interesting is the payload was not executed automatically when you open the document. When you open the document, you have to link in blue in my screen chat, to have additional information. And if you click on the link, you will have additional information. And in fact, it executes the payload on the machine. So if you look, let, execute this document on a sandbox in Korean with Angul installed, you must click on the link to have the, uh, a full report of what's happened on the, on the machine. So here it's the output of uh, my sandbox. And when you click on the link, it opens a new uh, HWP document and behind execute the, the shellcode. This document is a decoy document to make legit. I have more information about uh, the, the document. What uh, the payload uh, does in background, he gets the computer name, he gets the user name of the machine, the execution path, and the BIOS model. And he used a really specific key, registry key, to have the BIOS model. And you can make some search on Google, and it was not really documented. And I don't see a, a lot of malware that take this uh, specific key. So it's, it's interesting. What is the purpose? Always the same. Identify the target and be sure it's the real uh, target. <coughs> Here is the pick, uh, a pickup of the exfiltration of this data uh, from VirusTotal. On VirusTotal, you can download sample, and sometimes you can download the pickup generated by the sample. And once, once decoded, you have the information. And typically, Tequila Boom Boom is the host name of the sandbox system of VirusTotal. Janet uh, is the name, the username of the sandbox of VirusTotal. Virus Total put the sample in C uh, drive and execute it with the hash. And finally, you've got the BIOS uh, model. It's uh, Inotech VirtualBox. So Virus Total use VirtualBox. So typically in this case, when it's executed by a sandbox of Virus Total, the bad guy received this report and they are sure it's not the real target and they will not provide the final payload. The final payload is uh, generated uh, dynamically. If you look here, the first uh, data is an ID, and it generates an ID underscore put the JPEG, and in fact, it's a final remote administration tool. 
In this case, we sadly didn't get the final uh, remote, uh, the final binary. And the attackers compromised the current government website to store the executable uh, generated dynamically if the infected uh, target match what the attackers uh, want. So basically, you cannot blacklist legitimate governmental website in your country. Yeah, here it's uh, the map. I will share the slide, and you can have more detail about the infrastructure of, of the bad guy. Always concerning South Korea, as I said on the previous case, we were not able to have the final uh, remote administration tool, so investigation finished. But on another case, we finally uh, find a way to, to have it. And in this case, the uh, attackers compromised the official email of Korean Global Forum. So it's a forum in South Korea. So bad guys compromise the email account and send spear phishing from this legitimate email to several people with um, uh, a survey in attachment. HWP file. It's South Korea. It's always HWP file. And they use another kind of email uh, asking for help for someone uh, living in North Korea. So in this case, he, the attacker is trying to work on empathy uh, on, on the target. The two document. And it's same thing. It's uh, uh, OLE object inside of the uh, HWP document, ZD compress, as I said. And in this case, it was a, an exploit that download the JPEG file. So it's a pattern for this group. They always download JPEG file. Maybe this group is a previous speaker. I don't know. And uh, in this case, we, we were able to download the final payload. And it, it was uh, a funny sample. I'm going to speak really quickly about it because it's, it's not so common. The first thing, it does not support Windows XP. If it's run on Windows XP, you have an infinite loop. So your sandbox system uh, shows nothing. Uh, he is looking for several uh, running uh, analyst tools. It's really common for malware. And if he identifies one of these tools, if, for example, you have a virtual box or you have a process explorer or this kind of application, the malware will download a movie, a TV show on the internet. That's all. So if you look on your logs, you will see you are watching a TV show, a Japanese TV show. If you are correct and not a sandbox, he makes some connection on the first CC. Uh, it was seven Twitter account. So he's trying to connect on this Twitter account uh, through the API to download order. If it doesn't work, he used Yandex, uh, Russian cloud system with four different accounts, and if it really don't work, he switched to Mediafire cloud platform with account. All the accounts are coded inside of the sample, for example. So you can uh, see uh, on if, if it's up and running or not. And additionally, he contains kilogers. It's something uh, uh, really common. So, on each of these case study, uh, we saw it's basically always uh, users opening document, and it's basically always started by phishing campaign. But they make a, a lot of efforts to to keep their exploit and and uh, tools uh, private. So for us, it's 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 a little bit boring because sometimes you spend time on investigation and like, it's finished. You cannot go deeper, and you cannot have the final tool, or you don't have zero days that no patch, etc. And maybe it's the beginning, because we work on several other cases, absolutely not linked to targeted attack, but more crimeware stuff. And sometimes people from uh, crimeware have a pretty nice idea. For example, we, we saw uh, a, a group that uh, dropped pony stealer malware using publisher. I say, what the fuck? Why they use publisher to drop this kind of of stuff. And in fact, Microsoft documented, I think, why. The protected view mode is not supported by publisher. 
So if in your company you put a GPO that block uh, macro and the user cannot enable macro, in fact, it works for every office product except publisher. And publisher is in installed by default by, uh, in Office uh, 365. So if you are uh, people we have this kind of uh, office, uh, automatically have publisher installed on the system. So I think it's the reason why they decided to use publisher to drop a pony. I add another slide because each time I, I, I meet conference, people say to me, yeah, I use macOS, I'm safe and saved. So I decided to add a slide to prove they're wrong. We worked on um, uh, Office documents, so you can have Office on Mac, it works. And uh, Macro are supported on Mac OS, it's, it works too. So I work on a case where the guy has a function named Mac Shell and execute a one-liner Python script on the Mac. So you have exactly the same problem on macOS. Uh, if you have Office, you can enable macro, and you can execute Python script on your system. So macOS is not kind of protection. We have some mitigations for, for, for this topic. It's nothing uh, uh, awesome. It's simply uh, a good practice, like disabling macro execution. Uh, on Windows, on Office uh, 2016, you can have a, a better control of uh, macro. For PowerShell, typically you can add some uh, execution uh, restriction policy. So it's all this stuff are documented and should be applied. And if you apply all this stuff, the, all the case study I mentioned won't work uh, anymore. You can disable. Definitely, JavaScript and WScript. Generally, it does not generate problem, except if your, your company developed everything in JavaScript. So in this case, good luck. And uh, more generally, update your system, as you look on Friday last week. Uh, install AppLocker and configure it correctly. I see a lot of cases where people install AppLocker, but does not include DLL protection. So it avoids the execution of .exe file, but it does not block library loading. So yeah, and after you got more advanced stuff like device guard on VBS for on Windows 10. I'm not here to, to mention everything. And for macOS, I don't know if we can control script, and I don't think we have all the mitigation uh, uh, equivalent of uh, Windows system. So the conclusion for, for me is the actor may put a lot of efforts to, to protect the uh, valuable code. And something interesting is generally if the actors already compromise your company, they know your network better than you. They know your IP range. They know your domain. They know the pattern of your user name. They know the pattern of the host name. So if the attacker was already on your infrastructure in the past, he can really, really easily uh, check if it's on the correct machine. And I'm not sure that your sandbox system has bind to your domain. I'm not sure the naming convention of the users on inside of the virtual machine match your uh, naming convention. Same for the host name, same for everything. And as the guy was here before, he can easily control and check if it's a real system. Scripting language are really, really trendy. Each case, the guy use PowerShell or JavaScript or batch file sometimes. So we, we must really take time to have a control and an audit of this script execution. It's really important. And all these languages are embedded in Windows. You don't have to install anything. It's here. Why don't use it? And sometimes it's a little bit obfuscation is by default. If you look at PowerShell, sometimes it looks like obfuscated by design. So get the, take time to, to read it. Yeah, it's exactly what I said just, uh, just before. You, the bad guys know your infrastructure sometimes 
more than you, so it's easy for, for him to check. I think. Yeah. So have you got some question concerning this first part before going to the next one? We have some time for that. Don't worry. No? I was clear or boring. You are sleeping. Yeah. So I compressed a little bit the first part to add something not scheduled at the beginning. I decided last week to add it. It's a technical bonus, because technical conference, so I was a little bit frustrated to don't put any assembly language in my slide, so I decided to add a post-conclusion part. Last week, I opened a poll on Twitter, and I asked a simple question. I would like to know if I, I was the, the only one to use WinDBG to analyze PowerShell script. And uh, I, I will try on the room. So who say yes? I'm the only one to use. Who say no? So everybody is what the fuck. OK. <laughs> I will explain you why. So. PowerShell is more and more often used by malware developers, and I have more and more to analyze this shitty language. So I need to find a solution to have a better life. And I, I like WinDBG because it works, it's here, it's free, it's efficient. So I would like to analyze PowerShell script with WinDBG. So yes, you can. Just for people that don't know WinDBG, it's a uh, Reddit schema to clearly understand where we are. So, in fact, uh, you have two different kind of uh, usage of WinDBG by malware developers. Sometimes they directly use unmanaged code, so like DLL import in uh, C Sharp. So they can directly uh, use, uh, uh, I don't know, virtual log API. And in this case, you don't have to make something really specific. You debug as usual. You make some breakpoint on virtual alloc, and you can debug it like every application. So this part is not the most interesting part. But sometimes, the guy use uh, uh, directly PowerShell command. And in this case, you cannot debug as usual. How PowerShell works, in fact, each time he tried to execute uh, PowerShell uh, command, in fact, behind it used .NET framework. So PowerShell is more or less .NET. So WinDBG has a .NET support. You can make load by SOS CLR. And after you've got new commands, for example, BPMD for breakpoint break manage, I don't know what. And in this case, you can directly breakpoint on .NET execution. So here it's an example where I breakpoint on uh, process.start. And as it's a uh, high level language, you can have several functions for uh, process start. The same API. In fact, you have several functions depending on the type of argument you put. If you use a byte array, if you use a string, if you use something else, it will be a different function. So that's why in this case I've got uh, five different breakpoints by setting only one. So first thing, I'm able to breakpoint here. So next step, I execute my PowerShell and it stops uh, the execution on my breakpoint. WinDBG provides a command to analyze the stack of the .NET uh, code. It's a CLR stack, for example. And here we can see uh, that one parameter is start the uh, start info structures at a specific uh, address, finishing by uh, 18. I can have information on these uh, structures finishing by 18, and I've got all the description of what is a process start info object. And the first field of this object is a file name, and it's a system.string. Uh, structure. So I can dump directly these structures and I can see it in my case notepad.exe. So I can basically use WinDBG to automatically get the first argument of a start dash process. It works. 
if you want to avoid all the uh, manage command, I give you directly the register used to store this value. Just for information, uh, in this case is RCX, but it depends if you are PowerShell in 32 or 64 bits, and it depends of your .NET version. In .NET 2 and 3, it's different from .NET 4, so you need to check when you analyze something. Another example is I've got a lot of malware that make a download file, download a file and execute it after. I can do exactly the same thing. I can breakpoint on system.net.webclient.load file. I got my breakpoint. And yeah, it stopped on breakpoint. And I'm able to get the two arguments. The first one is the URL, and the second one is uh, where the file will be stored on your system. So the good point for me is imagine I've got to analyze, uh, I don't know, 600 PowerShell script. But I, I know it's the same kind of stuff. It's obfuscation, uh, encryption, XOR, pass 64, whatever. And at the end, he performs a download file and a start process. It's all different script, but uh, the philosophy behind is exactly the same. I decrypt the URL, I download, I execute. In this case, I can easily auto, uh, create a script on WinDBG to pass my 600 uh, PowerShell script in one hour. It works. I can show you. Because I'm crazy, I decided to create a demo a few minutes ago. So, if I make my start, my start process here, so my calculator is executed, but here you can see I directly uh, get the argument. Maybe it's uh, small. I don't know if I can increase, but I directly have the executed command. And if I do the same thing with downloading, for example, I download the uh, home page of NorthTech, I store it in test.txt file. Yeah, same thing. I automatically get the URL and automatically get where it's stored on the system. So I can really, really easily create a script to massively dump argument of this API and automatically analyze, get URL, blacklist URL, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it works. So the last slide for me. So generally, people doesn't like WinDBG for really good reason. And, uh, but it, it's really powerful, and you can make really awesome stuff. You can even debug .NET code. For example, I often use it to create unpacker for .NET packer. So directly in WinDBG, I'm able to manipulate .NET to uh, unpack and get the final payload, the final P file, the final shellcode, the final whatever. And I use WinDBG to do that because it's perfectly support .NET, and you can make script. You can make script with the shitty language of Microsoft. I don't know if you know how it works. It's so beautiful, I must show you. Yeah, it's a script. So it's not really easy. <laughs> but you can have an uh, extension to have Python support. So you can write it in Python if you prefer and don't like this uh, wonderful syntax. So you can really make some powerful uh, investigation and give your life, uh, have a better life and uh, make a lot of stuff automatically. So if you have questions on the first part or the second part, I'm here and we stay here all the day. So if you don't want to speak in front of everybody, feel free to come to me after. <laughs>